Hi there, my name is Kevin Todd, and today we're going to be looking at the vocal harmonies to Sweet Judy Blue Eyes by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. A lot of you guys requested it, so today I'm finally delivering. Let's get into it. And just before we get started, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel. I am at a dismally low subscriber count, and I would like to change that, so please consider subscribing for more awesome music vocal one-man band stuff. So a quick introduction as to why I'm doing this video. If you want to skip the introduction, just go to this timestamp. If you want to skip my pre-song pep talk, uh, go to this timestamp here. So about four years ago, I posted a video on my channel covering this song, all three harmony parts with a couple of guitars, to some pretty decent success. It became and still is my most popular video on my channel. But with that came a lot of support from you guys. A few of you even asked me if I could share the sheet music I made for this cover, which is complicated. Originally, I learned the song by ear, just by listening to the original, and with that, a few other covers that people had made, basically get a pretty good copy down. Now, I did end up writing sheet music for this. About a year after I posted that video, I then performed the song live with a few members from the choir that I was a part of at that time. I am yours, you are mine, you are what you are, and you make it a couple years after this performance, I see some comments on the video asking me to share the sheet music which I wrote, and I said yes. Then 2020 happened. And no, it has nothing to do with coronavirus. My computer crashed, and I had no backup. So here we are today, my computer is fixed, and I decided to make a video essay on this song rather than just raw sheet music. We can have a little bit more fun this way. Plus this gave me a great opportunity to relearn the song to then re-record the song. Back then I did not have autotune and I have autotune now and autotune is great. So that's my spiel on why I'm doing this video. Now let's talk about the song itself. Three major things we need to discuss about this tutorial. The first one, this is not from sheet music written by Stephen Stills. Like I said, I originally learned this song by ear. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be really, 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 really close, but I cannot guarantee perfection. Second major thing to think about, and this is, I guess, the first tip when doing this song. Yes, the harmonies are very tight and they're very tightly mixed, but they are not as complicated as we may think. More often than not, David Crosby, Stephen Stills, and Graham Nash are singing the notes of the chord that's being played at that moment. The exact notes of that chord. Let me show you an example. So if we were to look at the first line of the song, it's getting to the point where I'm no fun anymore. Stephen Stills is playing an E major chord on the guitar. Granted, he's not actually tuned his guitar to the standard tuning. It's actually an E modal tuning, but he's doing an E major chord. Just Work with me here. Now, as a result of that, each of the singers has picked a note of the E major triad to start the song. Stills starting on the E. It's David Crosby starting on the G sharp, which is the third. It's Graham Nash starting on the B, which is the fifth of the triad. It's so it makes a nice E major chord in the vocals. It's now for their line, it's getting to the point. On the word point, Stills is playing a D major chord on the guitar, the minor seventh. So as a result, all the singers sing up through the E major scale to a minor seventh. Stephen Stills starting on the E, he sings all the way up to a D. It's getting to the point. David Crosby, who starts on the G sharp, he moves up a minor seven to get to the F sharp. It's getting to the point. Finally, Graham Nash, starting on the B, he moves up a minor seven to go to the A. It's getting to the point. All three of them on those notes making a D major chord. Exactly what's being played in the guitar. So when you're recording the song or you're just learning it and you ever get lost, look at the chord sheet. See what chord is being played. 99% of the time, the note that you have to sing 
is going to be one of the notes in that chord. The third important thing about learning this song is the timbre that you use to sing the different parts. This is a little bit more directed towards the male singers trying to sing the song, but female singers, you can take a page from this as well. So what do I mean by timbre? Basically, where your voice is sitting and being projected from when doing your part in this song. For example, Graham Nash, he sings the majority of this song in falsetto. I am a high tenor, and as a result, I sang the majority of this song in chest and mixed voice, going to the falsetto only for stylistic choices. You will have that decision to make as well if your voice is in that upper register. You will have to make that choice whether or not you want to sing the song with parts in falsetto or parts in a mixed voice. I personally like it when the majority of the voices are in a mixed or a chest voice, especially in harmonies. I think it adds a little bit more drama, a little bit more passion, but there's a subtlety and soft brilliance with uh, doing falsetto, which I cannot recreate, especially for a song as delicate as this. That's a creative license that you have when recording this song. So play around a little bit with how you actually sit your voice when uh, performing this song. You are the singer. You can decide those creative liberties and all the power to you there. So enough talking. Let's get into the song itself. How it's going to work is I'm going to play a section with all three vocals. Then I'll isolate each vocal part and I'm going to repeat that for all four movements of the suite. And again, if you do like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. And finally, if you do make a cover of this song, please send it my way. I would love to hear what you guys do with this song. Anyways, that's all I have to say. Let's get into the lesson. It's getting to the point where I'm no fun anymore. I am sorry. Sometimes it hurts so badly I must cry out loud well, I am lonely I am yours You are mine You are what you are And you make it hard It's getting to the point Where I'm no fun anymore sorry sometimes it hurts so badly I must cry out loud well, I am lonely I am yours you are mine you are what you are and you make it hard it's getting Sometimes it hurts so badly I must cry out loud I am yours, you are mine, you are what you are Hi. It's getting to the What have you got? 
got to Just not brown canary Ruby throat its sparrow Sing the song Don't be long Fill me to the marrow Just not brown canary Ruby throat its sparrow Sing the song Ruby throat, it's bad.